Hey guys, in this effect house tutorial, I want to show you how you can create a fake random selector. It's like a normal random selector, but it always lands on the same option. So yeah, let's start. Hey again, so let's create this fake random selector here in effect house. Before we start creating the effect, please make sure that you have ready all the assets you want to use in this effect. So the start card, then all the options, which will flip through and also the end option. If you don't have your own assets ready yet, just go to the description to the download link where you can download some graphics to follow along this tutorial. So after you have downloaded the assets or you have created your own assets, just go to the folder where you have saved your assets. For this filter, we need a start PNG. This will show up at the beginning of this filter and of course all the options we want to have in the filter. So for the import just drag and drop the start.png into the assets panel. Then go to the options and then select the one option you want to see at the end of the effect. I will go with this option and also drag and drop it into my assets panel. For the options which will flip through during the effect, we have to create a texture sequence. For this we go to our assets panel, click on the plus, then we go to import and here we select texture sequence. Now we navigate to our folder with the options, then click on it and then here we select all of our options we want to see in the filter and then we click on open. After the import is done, please make sure that you set the compression of all the assets to none. For this, we go to the assets panel, click on the texture, go to the right hand side and here choose for the compression type none. I do this for the final output, then also for start and of course also for my texture sequence. So now we can start setting up our scene for this effect. For this we go to the left hand side to our scene panel and here we click on add object. The first object I want to create is a 3D scene object. For this we go to scene object and here we select scene object. Then we also have to create three other objects. Those will be image objects for the start, the rotation and also for the final output. So again we go to add object, go to 3D and here we select image. So then make sure this image is inside of our scene object. So select it and then drag and drop it into the scene object. I will rename this image now. I will rename this to start. So this will be my start image. Now I select the start object, go to the right hand side and here for the texture I will select my start texture. Then I will go again to my scene, click on the start object and now I just want to duplicate this. Just right click on it and then click on duplicate. And this should be my end image. So right click again and rename it to end. Now this texture is also the start texture but I want to have the final output. So select the end image, go to the right hand side and here for, this, for the texture select the output you will you want to see at the end. So now we have this picture and now we need of course another image here in our scene for the rotation. For this also go to the left hand side to the scene then right click on end and then here click on duplicate so we have a third image object. Right click and I will call this rotation. Now select rotation, go to the right hand side and for the texture select the texture sequence. And now you can already see that this is shuffling through all the options. After we have set up our scene we can start um, the programming of our effect. Um, to open the visual scripting panel go to the left hand side and here click on visual scripting. And now you have the visual scripting window open. And now I want to trigger my effect with a tab on the screen. So for this we need a screen tab node in our visual scripting. So go to the plus, add a new node and search for screen tab. So now we have the screen tab here. And when I tap on the screen, 
I want to have the start disappearing and then the rotation should appear. And after a certain amount of time, like three seconds, the rotation should be um, invisible and the end should be visible. To do this, we go to our visual scripting and for the screen tab, the next output will go into a set visibility node. So just um, drag the next output, release it and here search for visibility, set visibility. So now we want to um, yeah, set the visibility um, on for our rotation. Um, to make sure this works properly, um, go to the left hand side and here just activate the um, visibility for the start image and set it up for the end and for the rotation. Now, when we tap on the screen, the rotation should show up. This is already right. So restart the filter here. But to be sure that the start image disappears, we also want to set the visibility off for our start image. So we need another set visibility node. So the next output of the set visibility goes into another set visibility node. So again here, the target will be the start image and the visibility is off. Now we want to wait three seconds and then the rotation should disappear and the end output should appear. So again, we go to the next output of the set visibility and here we search for a weight node. Here we set the weight node to, let's say, three seconds. And then we need, of course, another set visibility node. So the next output of the weight for seconds node gets into a set visibility node. Here we want to set the visibility off. So it's off for the rotation. And we need another set visibility node, of course. Um, now for the for the end. So we want to set the visibility on for our end image. And now when we tap on the screen, the rotation starts, and then the output we have set comes up in the end. So restart it again <clears throat> and try it again. And yeah, it's always the same output. So now I want to have this above my head. This is very simple to do. And this is also why I work with the scene object because now we can just go to add object, go to AR tracking and here we select the head tracker. After we have created the head tracker, there's automatically um, this head object in it, but we don't need it so we can just delete it. And now we can close our scene object and now just drag and drop this scene object with all the image inside of it to, into our face binding. And when we do this, this is following our head. Now we just want to reposition it. We want it to have it a little bit more in the front and also more on top of the head and also a little bit bigger. So we select the scene object on the left hand side, go to the right hand side and here we just play around with the position. I will set the Y position to 12, so it's above my head, and the Z position, let's say, to 5, so it's in front of the head. So you can now just play around to find the right position for your yeah, effect. Now we go here to scale, then we activate this chain icon, and now we can set the scale from 1 to, let's say, 1.6. Now it's, it's bigger and yeah, this looks very good, but now you see a little bit too close to my eyes. So yeah, let's change the position from 12 to 14. Yeah, this looks better. So now you can, of course, also change the position and the scale for every um, yeah, image separately, but yeah, most of the time just changing the scene object position and scale would, yeah, would be fine. So yeah, this is all the magic about a fake random selector here in 
Effectos. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If yes, give it a thumbs up and if you're new on this channel, it would be nice when you subscribe to it. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!